Sunday is that special time for us to get together and study the Word of God. We're so glad that you've joined us this morning for our presentation of Give Me the Bible. So go get your Bible, sit down, and let's study together from the pages of God's eternal Word right here on Give Me the Bible. You know, we'd like to believe that everybody that carries a Bible or everyone that goes to a particular religious body and worships is actually worshiping with God's people. You know, isn't it a shame that there are so many different religious groups meeting under the name The Church? Have you ever really checked the credentials of many of these religious bodies? Sometimes people are more interested in going to the church closest to their house than the church that is closest to the Bible. You know, we ought to be a people that love God and, and want to find out if we're really doing God's will. There is so much fake news out in our world today, and we're just not hearing the truth as it is revealed in the Holy Bible. God loves all of us, and he wants us to honor him. But can we honor him if we're not doing his will? I'm convinced that we need to check the credentials of anyone who says that he has some kind of religious authority and it's not from God. Well, we believe that the Bible is our authority. Some people ask me all the time, they say, you know, well, what are, where are your credentials uh, for preaching the gospel? Some people say, well, I was ordained at a particular place and, and so that makes me an authority on religious matters, does it? Uh, what does the Bible actually teach? And uh, many times people do not even know anything really about the church. They've, had, they've heard bad things about the church of Christ and uh, all the bad press, like you're the only ones going to heaven and we're not going to make it. And, well, you know, we, don't, uh, we use instrumental music in our worship and you all don't. And, well, why is that? Have you ever checked their credentials? That is the Bible for authority in religious matters. It is so very, very important that we do that. Even when it comes to the thought of salvation and how one is saved, we need to check their credentials. What does God say? Jesus, you see, said, all authority has been given unto me. Matthew chapter 28 and verse 18. All authority, not part of it. He is the authoritarian. And he has asked us to go into all the world and preach that same message. You see what Christ preached? It's what we're about. We're preaching and we're teaching right here on Give Me the Bible. We do it by television. We do it by uh, print. We do it from the pulpit. We do it in a personal way. And we're just so thankful that you have joined us today for our presentation of Give Me the Bible. And that's what you're going to hear the rest of this telecast this morning. So don't get up, go in the kitchen or run to the bathroom. Just sit right there with your Bible and study with us in the pages of God's eternal word. We are happy to have with us today with the Barry Haynes and uh, Barry's from uh, over near Texarkana and Hope, Arkansas. And we're just so happy that you're here today, uh, Barry. And we want you to talk to us a little bit further about how important it is for us to check the credentials. You know, it's important to check credentials and to see if things are actually so, especially when it comes to false religion, because so many false religions appear to be true. Let me tell you a story about a woman by the name of Georgia Tan. Georgia Tan was the executive director of the Shelby County Children's Home. She was responsible for really the modern adoption phenomenon. She was a, a big proponent of adoption. Uh, she had kids that were adopted all over the country, many to famous celebrities like Lana Turner and Joan Crawford. In fact, that wrestler Rick Flair, Rick Flair was one of her kids that she got adopted. Uh, it got her a lot of attention. Uh, she received awards from the Memphis, this town that she was in. President Roosevelt, uh, uh, President Truman had her at her inauguration. Uh, Eleanor Roosevelt uh, talked to her about the phenomenon of adoption. Pearl Buck wanted to write a book about her. People thought great things about her, but the truth of the matter was Georgia Tan was a human trafficker and a child murderer. 
You see, the children that she had for adoption were literally ones she had stolen from poor families telling them that their children had died. She would farm out these kids and the ones that didn't get adopted, she would let, let die in her orphanage. In fact, during her time, uh, Memphis had the highest rate of infant mortality because of their treatment of her kids. The number of kids that she uh, died is unknown because she destroyed many records, but it's estimated to be over 500, making her one of the worst mass murderers in American history. People were fooled by Georgia Tan because she clowned herself looking like she was doing something great, but deep down, the truth was something different. In our world today, the same thing happens in religious things. Jesus warned us in Matthew chapter 7, verse 15, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. Paul talks about in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 13 through 15, how there will be false teachers who act like Satan, who disguise themselves as angels of light. Satan fools people into thinking that he is something good when in fact he is bringing about their destruction. And the same thing is true for today. There is false religion. There are people who proclaim and they look on the surface to be good. And unless we look a little bit deeper, we won't see the evil that is underlying it. That's why we're warned about false teachers. We're warned to look below the surface so that we can see whether the things they say and their deeds are actually true. Back to you, Dan. Thank you, Barry. And you know, what we see in our world today is what Christ saw in his world. As a matter of fact, he gave 23 different scathing denunciations against the scribes and the Pharisees in the Holy Bible. They were teaching things that were so contradictory to what God had said. And Jesus came preaching God's word. And we must be doing the same. And that's why we bring lessons like this right here on Give Me the Bible. To give you, that's it, the Bible. The Bible and the Bible alone. We're happy that Brother Jerry uh, Munholland is with us today. And Jerry, doesn't the Bible, uh, really, when you read the book of 1 John uh, 4 and verse 1, doesn't it say that we are to test the Spirit, whether they're of God, try them? Look at their credentials. Aren't we to do that? Absolutely, Dan. In fact, let's turn to that scripture. We're just going to carry on where Brother Barry uh, led us to and continue reinforcing about trying the, spirit, the spirits. This is what John said. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits. Uh, some versions say test the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Many, it happened at the time of Jesus, it happened at the time of John's writing, it is happening today, and many. So how do we know which ones are false prophets or which ones are true prophets? He said to test them or try them. And we'll find out something. We'll find out, number one, whether they willingly preach error or maybe ignorantly preach error. Let's look at some examples. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, beginning at verse 1, Paul says to Timothy, preach the word. Uh, be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth. As they turn away their ears from the truth, Lo and behold, there's someone that will teach something that's pleasing unto their ears. Knowing is not the truth. Knowing is a false doctrine, but knowing it will be accepted. They knowingly teach it. Now let's turn to Acts chapter 18. We read about Aquila and Priscilla preach, teaching Apollos. He was an eloquent man, verse 24 of Acts 18. Mighty in the scriptures, but he was Instructed in the way of the Lord, being fervent in spirit, he spake diligently of the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. And Aquila and Priscilla heard him, took him aside, expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. So we have an example of those who willingly teach false doctrine and one who unknowingly teaches, and he needs to be taught a little bit more. So... Test the spirits. Try the spirit. Are they one who willingly teaches or ignorantly teaches and needs to be uh, more fully informed of what the doctrine is? Now back to you, Dan. Well, Jerry, didn't Jesus say, He that is not with me is against me. 
and he that gathereth not scattereth abroad. If that is true, then we have to stand up for what we know to be right according to the will of God. And sometimes uh, the Bible says that we have to rebuke, exhort with all long suffering, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But Perry Cowan has uh, made his way here today, and we're going to ask Perry to expound even further on this subject. You know, and Perry, I know that a lot of people uh, intentionally are trying to encourage others when they are misleading them and guiding them by asking God to bless them and their uh, endeavors that are wrong. Isn't that correct? Yes, Dan, I believe that is correct. What are your credentials? for worshiping God. Where do you get the authority to do the things that you do? I'm going to bring us to understand when Jesus said that if we're going to worship God, we worship Him in spirit and in truth. We must not add to the things that are in the truth. We must not leave out things that are in the truth. What is the truth? The truth is the word of God. Thy word is truth. Sanctify them by thy word. So as we strive to worship in spirit and in truth, we must not practice. We must not encourage. We must not condone anything that is outside the doctrine of Christ, outside God's holy word. We must follow the instructions that are given us there because thy word is truth. Listen to what John has to say in uh, 2 John, beginning at verse 7. He said, For many deceivers have gone out into the world, those who do not acknowledge Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh. This is the deceiver and the antichrist. Watch yourselves that you do not lose what we have accomplished, but that you may receive a full reward. And listen to verse 9. Anyone who goes too far and does not remain in the teaching of Christ does not have God. What was that, John? Anyone who goes too far and does not remain in the teaching of Christ does not have God. We must stay within the bounds of the credentials that are given us by God's Word, not going beyond it. The one who remains in the teaching has both the Father and the Son, John continued. He said, and if anyone comes to you and does not bring this teaching, do not receive him into your house, do not give him a greeting, for the one who gives them a greeting participates in his evil deeds. So we need to check out a church's credentials, a congrega any congregation, uh, before we actually join ourselves to it, uh, because the problem is that oftentimes we don't uh, recognize it because we are not versed in the scriptures ourselves so that we can recognize error. Dan? And Perry, I believe that you are absolutely correct. And that's why it's so important and so urgent for us to know the Word of God. We have a lot of people today that are teaching things that are absolutely ridiculous when it comes to salvation. It's more than just a blab it and grab it or a name it and claim it relationship with Christ. Much, much more than that, much deeper. And when I think about the credentials of any religious body, then I'm reminded that we must go much further than just the name on the building or the claim that they make. And Brother Chris Groda, would you speak to us regarding that? Absolutely, Dan. In fact, I want to mention a couple of different things. First of all, I just want to say that there are a lot of congregations that are concerned about the truth of God's Word and want to preach and teach only the truth. And when it comes to hiring a preacher or having guest speakers in, they they want to know something about that person doctrinally. In fact, when I filled out an application to preach for the North Jefferson Church of Christ in Mount Pleasant, Texas, uh, there was a very lengthy Bible questionnaire. And then even when we got into the actual interview, there were even more uh, follow-up questions to uh, doctrinal position. Here's the thing. What they did not want 
was for me or anybody else to come in there and present any doctrinal surprises and disrupt the, the uh, church in any way doctrinally. And I think that's part of what it means to oversee and shepherd the flock of God over the which the Holy Ghost has made them overseers, Acts chapter 20. And then the same thing would apply to those who desire to place membership before they place membership. Uh, nowadays, you know, people will uh, want to do that and, and the elders will say, well, that's just great. Let's set up a time to have a meeting with you. And they discuss all the doctrinal uh, particulars of our congregation and they want to know if they're in agreement with that or if they hold different views. If they are different, why are they different? And is it something that they're willing to study out? Acts 17 in verse number 11 tells us to be like the noble Bereans who who uh, not just receive the word with all readiness of mind, but will search our scriptures daily to see if what we're being taught is true. If they were committed for them stepping up and taking that kind of responsibility for their own uh, salvation in regarding to hearing the word of God, why shouldn't leaderships of the church be as concerned about who is coming into that flock? False doctrine overthrew the faith of some over in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse number 18. So when we think about placing membership someplace or even visiting another congregation nowadays, we have a lot of things on websites available to us, statements of faith, articles, links to other works that they support. And, um, you know, we have YouTube, but we can look at the sermons that are preached, and we can find out, we can get a sense of the culture, the doctrinal culture of a particular congregation. And then finally, if there's still any more questions, just call that number on the website and have a telephone interview with the preacher and the elders. That would be a good way to go about it. Back to you, Dan. Well, thank you so much. And uh, we really are grateful today, Chris, for your kind words. You know, by the way, you can find us on YouTube. Uh, you can like us on Facebook. And we have a litany, actually, of religious programming there that you may watch. You can go back in the archives and watch various uh, presentations of Give Me the Bible, different subject matter, and uh, we're happy to make that available to you. We're also happy today to have Brother Kerry Clark with us. And uh, Kerry, I know that back during the days of Christ, there were those that we refer to as the Bible calls them false apostles. And they had a lot of claims, but those claims were not of God. And there's nothing wrong, and it is certainly important, imperative, that we search the credentials of those who claim to be teachers of God. Do we not? You're exactly right, Dan, and as uh, hard as it is, it's not easy for us to, to look at people and, and begin to question some of the things that they're saying or what they're doing or what they're teaching, but it is absolutely vital that we do because as uh, has already been mentioned in the program, if you don't test the credentials of someone, if you don't know where they're coming from, then you're liable to be led astray. Paul writes in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, Beginning in verse number 13, he says, For such are false apostles. As Dan mentioned a moment ago, in the first century, there were those that were claiming to be apostles of Christ, and they were not. They were false apostles. Well, how did people know that they were false apostles? They had to check them out. So Paul said, For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, listen to this, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. See, by all appearance, they look like they're an apostle of Christ until they open their mouth. And then in verse 14, he says, it's no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their work. You remember that in Revelation 2 and verse number 2, as Jesus was writing to the church at Ephesus, he tells them that there were those that were there who were claiming to be apostles. He says, I know thy works, thy labor, thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil, and hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and found them liars." See, they were putting these people to the test in Ephesus, and they wanted to know, were these guys teaching what Jesus taught? Were they teaching what the other apostles had taught? 
Jesus tells us in Matthew chapter 7, beginning in verse number 21, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. He says, Many will say unto me in that day, Have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name cast out devils, in thy name done many wonderful works? Jesus said that I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Yes, Dan, we've got to put them to the test. And it is so true that we must know the difference between truth and error. And the only way that you can really know that is to get back into the Word of God. Well, uh, you know, one of the things that, that I see today that really troubles me is the fact that a lot of people, even when it goes to hiring a preacher, they're looking for someone with a charming personality. And sometimes brethren fall into that trap and say, oh, it's going to be a wonderful preacher. He has a charming personality. Doesn't matter whether he's teaching truth or not. You know, Jesus didn't have a charming personality, believe it or not. When you read about Jesus Christ of Nazareth, he did not come as one would appear today in charming dress. He didn't come into Jerusalem before the Passover riding a white stallion. But he came not as one who would appear to be a king. But we look today for people with charming personalities instead of one who is going to preach and teach the Word of God. And Brother Randy Foreman is going to tell us about that. I'm happy to do so, Dan, and thank you for having me on the program this morning. What an interesting 30 minutes it's been almost in checking the credentials of the real, true Church of Christ. You know, Dan taught us at the beginning that Christians often find the need to worship with different congregations to find the right church, the true Church of Christ. But realistically, we need to check more closely what is being taught. And Barry, you remember, taught us that we should check more closely simply because false religion sometimes appears to be true, but on the surface alone. Jerry and Perry, Chris and Carrie, they followed with testing the spirits to not practice or encourage anything outside of the doctrine of Christ. We are to check beyond the claim and the name and also investigate how many false prophets there actually are in a particular church, and I mean the Church of Christ. You know, brethren, let us look beyond the personalities of a church and look into the congregational policies. In the church you attend, are they generous or selfish, cool or cordial, ungodly or godly, hypocritical or sincere, faithful or unfaithful? Personalities may not be a measure of a congregation's policies, but rather is it rooted in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, and let me give you the facts of the gospel. Now I remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and which you stand, and by which you are now being saved if you hold fast to the word that I preached to you. Unless you believed in vain, for I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received. Now get this that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures, and that He was buried, and that He was raised on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. Thank you all of us, and we hope that our lessons have been true and on point. Back to you, Dan. Well, Brother Randy, you're exactly right, and we appreciate your remarks there today, very timely, very thoughtful, and we appreciate your watching. We always appreciate those who view this telecast, and there are many thousands of people who are viewing this telecast every Lord's Day, and we're just simply trying to preach unto you and teach you the Word of God. That's all we're about. Uh, it's not for compensation. We're not compensated for what we do uh, other than the blessing of God. Uh, but we're here not to get your money, but to reach out like Jesus did to save your soul. 
And that's what this telecast has always been about. I appreciate so much in a very personal way the letters and the cards and the emails that we receive and the calls expressing your support for this telecast. So we hope and pray that you'll tell a friend about it and uh, that you'll join us right here on this same station at this same time next week for another presentation of Give Me the Bible. Sing the sweetest song of all. 